Welcome to all students in this presentation on the topic Total Quality Management for the subject Industrial Management for which the subject code is RAS601. The subject is meant for BTEC 6 semester students from all the branches. In this presentation, we'll discuss about various points that is Total Quality Management the need of total quality management followed by the guiding principles of total quality management, the model taken into consideration for management, managing the quality in totality of the object, the key elements of total quality management. Now, later on, we'll compare total quality management with the classical or traditional approach. Further, we'll discuss the points as well as analogies given by different scholars, different Japanese scholars like Deming, Joseph M. Zuran, etc. And last but not least, we'll also discuss about the steps taken into consideration in total quality management process and benefit of total quality management to the different stakeholders from the society and uh, within the organization both. To start with the concept of total quality management that the term total quality management was coined after the World War II with the development of Japan where it is steadily popular during 1980s. This was the approach which was centered towards the quality of the product produced in the organization it can be managed by the participation of all the members of an organization. Earlier, I have already explained the different phases of quality control in which I emphasize on the third phase that is statistical quality control that was uh, in uh, uh, population, I mean, in, uh, that was popular during 1950s as it was evolved by the uh, American Army and uh, military services. Then, um, after but after World War II, uh, with the uh, with the pace of industrialization, the need of quality was assessed in the products produced by the concerns. And at that time, quality was uh, uh, not considered as a big factor, but uh, uh, the big concerns or the developing or developed countries uh, developed countries know the importance of quality as a concept and so they emphasize the principle of management principle of management along with the quality and together Japanese evolved this concept with the aim to get success through customer satisfaction and benefit to the members of organization as well as society. So basically total quality management is the concept which was needed to achieve the excellence in the business and to in grow the uh, business that is to acquire more and more market share more to increase the sales volume and to minimize the defect in the process of product and also this approach is needed to reduce the wastes during the process and to improve the productivity along with quality. As per this Japanese scholar Bentley, they provide a definition of TQM as a systematic approach to educate, manage and operate the design to focus and coordinate the effects, efforts of all the employees in an organization to perform a series of activities that is to improve the quality of the ultimate product produced. Like they must know and meet the requirement of their job. All these stakeholders must work together to prevent the problems which may cause defect within the process and within the product also they should understand the cost of not meeting the requirement and they also have to reduce the cost on the continuous basis then only the quality of the 
goods produced will be managed as well as maintained. In order to maintain the quality or in order to manage the quality of the goods produced, certain principles are taken into consideration. These are the guiding principles of total quality management. They helped in developing the total quality management with the first and foremost principle that is related to the objective of TQM. The objective behind developing total quality management is to continuously improve the quality of the goods produced at every level, at every place, at every stage. And the approach was to involve the management and uh, involve each and every person who is working in the organization by empowering the staff teamwork and action oriented research along with to increase the leadership. The scale, the scale as I told you earlier that each and everyone who is working within the organization as well as outside the organization in terms of consumer as well as vendors are involved in this uh, system that is they also provide their feedback so that the quality of the raw material as well as goods, final good can be improved. Further, the standard punch line that was taken uh, into consideration for improving the productivity, improving the quality of the goods produced was do it right first time every time. If the good will produce rightly at first time then and every time, then there will be no chance to arise the defect or not within the process and the ultimate measure to of quality is the customer satisfaction only for that the philosophy is the preventive approach rather than corrective and the tools used for maintaining the quality is commitment from the end of manufacturer or service provider involvement or participation of each and every employee within the organization and outside the organization, motivation, education as well as training to those who lack in any type of skill and uh, organization development followed by to prepare and maintain the quality systems. In this particular slide, we can see a TKM model, a basic TKM model is discussed that involves different stakeholders and all these stakeholders are connected together with, uh, with each other. Then only TQM model uh, gets success. It involves the first and foremost the planning process, second the process management, third process involvement, fourth the total in part, uh, participation of each and every stakeholder working inside or outside the organization as well as it's a customer focused approach. So all these when combined together then only uh, the quality of the finished good can be maintained as well as can be managed successfully. Here some key elements of total quality management are shown in this diagram where you can see that integrity, ethics, leadership, teamwork and training are as like as the building bricks of the organization. These are the basic requirements to, to process to produce the qualitative good whereas recognition that is motivation is a type of roof that uh, that is uh, uh, based on uh, these building bricks and communication is this just like the cement that binds all these uh, factors together and if the communication will be there then ethics integrity trust training teamwork will be maintained leadership will be there there and 
each and every employee should be recognized will be recognized for their work in the organization then only the organization will think on to maintain and manage the quality overall quality within the product next slide is about to compare the uh, total quality management approach with the conventional approach as we discussed in the previous tkm model that it was customer driven just because customer feedback was an, was important uh, from the viewpoint of company whereas in traditional approach focus on uh, focus was on company driven that is as the producer produce the goods and he provide the good to the consumer as per his cho his choice his own choice the second and uh, most important difference in between the tkm as well as conventional approach is tkm is long term approach and conventional approach was short term approach short term approach in that sense like the conventional approach is profit making approach whereas uh, total quality management approach is customer is increases customer loyalty towards the product produced by the manufacturer and so we are saying it as long term approach next and uh, important difference between tkm and traditional approaches tkm approach is data driven that is it is based on the facts and uh, uh, relies the different standards set earlier whereas uh, traditional approach is opinion based approach say uh, somebody says that yes uh, the product will be good for the customer then um, the product was okay and um, the production uh, the product leads to the production stage the next um, important difference between total quality management with the conventional approach is elimination total quality el management approach talks about elimination of waste rather than finding it out in later stage and correcting it then whereas conventional approach is the corrective approach and it is uh, having a, a tolerance um, for the wastage produced during the processing next an important difference between total quality management and traditional approach is tkm focuses on continuous improvement instead of uh, one time quality exercise one time mock drill exercise and the focus was tkm focus of tkm is to prevent it's a proactive approach prevent the defect rather than uh, correction and detection the next and important difference between the tkm and a conventional approach is tkm to implement the tkm in an organization cross functional teams are worked together where number of people from production quality maintenance research and development and from other areas are are combined together and they provide their they share their experiences together in order to um, improve the quality of the product for the betterment of the quality of the product whereas traditional approach focuses uh, and focuses on the efforts of quality department only they relies on quality persons only and don't uh, take support from the product from the production store or any other departments departments and their personals next and uh, important difference between the two approaches are that uh, tkm is high employee participative approach that is uh, in tkm for for the success of tkm each and every employee working at working at every level right from uh, labor class to the executive as well as the top management are uh, participating together in order to make the success make the qualitative product whereas in tradition as per the traditional post top to down hierarchy follows tkm is the approach related to problem solving instead of blaming to each and every other department for producing wrong quality and it's a systematic thinking approach rather than isolation 
number of scholars were there in Japan who provides this significant role in Deming was the quality guru of Japanese, a Japanese quality guru who provides a different points related to the quality analogy. The first and foremost point was to create the constancy of the purpose. Another point was to adopt the philosophy of prevention of defect rather than detection and correction. Next is to seize mass inspection, that is to check each and every, each and every product and their quality in order to ensure that the product is qualitative enough. Next is to select a few suppliers based on the quality for the long term. For long term, few suppliers or vendors are taken into consideration and they only select for the for taking the raw material. Next is the, the system, existing system should be improved on constant basis with the help of workers. And those who are weak on the shop floor uh, in terms of acquiring and implementing the skills, they should train properly and uh, develop the leadership skill uh, among the employees who are working. Also, it is important to eliminate fear among the employees to produce wrong. Just because of the fact like when the employees will be trained enough, then they will not be uh, suffered from any kind of fear. Next is eliminate the barriers between the department that is by functioning the cross functional like um, each and every department works together then uh, obviously the barrier will not be there, be removed. And uh, uh, eliminate the slogans like I am from production, uh, uh, why should I conscious about quality and all. So this type of uh, slogans should be eliminated. Another important point mentioned by Deming, provided by Deming is remove work standards that is quotas like I have to work on this much limit only uh, and rather to provide the quota like targets they have to uh, the management itself have to develop the leadership skill among each and every worker each and every person working at different level in the organization. Further they can do so by enhancing the pride of the worker and encourage the education and, and training programs will help to uh, maintain and manage the quality in long term. And all these points if taken into consideration then only the quality will manage and maintain for the long term. Next an important uh, philosopher, uh, scholar Juran, they provide their analogy that is the, the, the trigology that is uh, known as uh, Juran's trigology and he basically focus on planning, controlling and improvement in terms of uh, maintaining and managing the quality in the production as well as processing. He um, first he provide the points related to plan the quality that first the organization must establish their quality goals, identify their customer needs and translate those needs in terms of the proper specifications and all. Then they have to develop a product according to the need of the customer and tries to optimize the product feature for the, the customer's need. Then uh, once the planning process takes place properly, then they have to take care about the control. They have to control the quality during the processing. And uh, for that, they uh, the process can uh, produce under the operating conditions that are specified earlier and transfer the process to the operation. That is, they have to take care about each and every uh, process that are carried on the shop floor means labor should also take care about the quality of the product produced and last but not least if the once the planning as well as control part is over then 
each and every employee who is working in the organization emphasized or focused on to improve the quality of the piece produced, piece or part produced. Further, last but not least, the steps, there are various steps and uh, these steps are helpful to implement the total quality management approach in an organization and uh, for this the PDCA cycle is used that is plan, do, check and act. This cycle is continuously used and uh, it's a continuous process just because we have to maintain the quality on the long run basis and, and continuous basis. First, we have to plan. What we have to plan? We have to plan the policies, objectives, and according to the policies, we have to uh, work on the methods that are implemented on the shop floor. Second, in the second stage, once the policies and objectives are framed, methods are defined, then about those methods, the labor as well as executive must be um, must know about those methods through proper education and training programs and if there will be any change there is any change in the method any kind of objective or policy then the change should also be implemented and if they do so then the third stage in the third stage they have to check the uh, quality of the product through the through observing the result analyzing the result and they have to act accordingly in order to prevent the undesired effect and to take suitable measure for the improvement of the quality of the goods produced. And last but not least, the benefits of TQM to, eat to the different stakeholders. Like when we talk about stakeholders, then from the viewpoint of organization, customer and producer, vendor, government, they all are the stakeholders which are benefited by the TQM and how they will be benefited. Some of the points, some of the points are mentioned like uh, uh, advantage unique to TQM approach for the organizational point of view. It makes company a leader, not follower. They, the company will be uh, the leader, leading company in its in its area, if they follow DQM approach, it makes company more sensitive towards the uh, towards assessing the needs of customer. It makes company adapt more readily to change because as they aware about the customer's need, they can they they will produce accordingly. They the the approach is benefit uh, benefited or beneficial for the customers like if the few problems um, will be discussed by the consumer in terms of through uh, feedback then the those problems will be addressed properly and the product will be qualitative one and obviously for this the consumer as well as marketeer communication play an important role and with the communication only, the consumer feels the feeling of satisfaction and he further becomes brand loyal or the product loyal. Next uh, benefit uh, to the company point of view as well as their staff point of view is the company will provide better product quality at low costs because when the market share will improve, the voice sales volume will improve, the obviously the cost will go down. The, uh, the, the company's point of view, the enhanced problem solving capacity, they, they can enhance their problem solving capacity and they uh, in future they will come with the innovative products. And uh, also the, uh, the probability to produce will be finished almost the Profit, profit share as well as market share will improve from the viewpoint of company and if we talk about the staff that staff morale will increase as well as with the training recognition improvement in skills they will their their morale will boost their 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 uh, 
they will be uh, more happy satisfied as well as the grievance among the employees will also be reduced to a large extent this presentation uh, i have taken the reference book as m mahajan amitabh mitra and peter d mauch thank you thank you for your kind attention to